Uh, hello, I'm Sufia uh, from Afghanistan and I'm a member leader of the Community Library Project. Uh, we are delighted to have Easter Deflow today in library with us. Uh, Easter Deflow is an outstanding uh, economist known for her pioneering work in eco development economics and poverty elevations. She was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2019. Uh, uh, for um, her experimental approach uh, to tackling go uh, global poverty. Her research focuses on understanding uh, the cause of poverty and also uh, designing effective interventions to uh, improve the lives of the poor. Uh, we're very happy to have you today in our library. Uh, first of all, I want to ask that uh, what has been your experience so far in our library today? And could you share your thoughts on what caught your attention, uh, also especially meeting uh, our core team leaders in the library? Uh, so, uh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's been a delightful experience. The moment I stepped into the library, I could feel uh, how it was a, a, a welcoming space and a space where there was a lot of seriousness of purpose and a lot of people were there reading, but at the same time you could almost feel the, the the collective uh, empathy and the joy that was there. So uh, it was uh, a pleasure from the moment I stepped into the library. And then I had the privilege of talking to a group of, um, of young leaders and hear their stories and how they were able through this space to uh, not only cope with the problems that they experienced in their life, but turn these problems into something, uh, something bigger and something rich. So this would not have happened without the alchemy of this group and this and this place. So it was a true yeah, pleasure. That's great. Uh, the adaptation of poor economics into a children series is quite unique. Uh, what inspired you to introduce economic concept to young readers, and uh, how did you approach this concept to make them accessible for uh, and engaging for children? So there are many ways to answer these questions. Um, uh, one could say, well, you know, it's important for kids to, that there is books for kids on these topics because there are really not very many. Yeah. And the one that exists about kids living in, in poverty that tend to be seen from the perspective of the rich of a rich child. Uh, and therefore, they are either uh, depict a very, very sad life or on the contrary, uh, a very a hero, like a young hero that is solving uh, all the issues. And neither of these are very true <laughs> to I think and uh, to the lives of uh, of poor people ar around the world, which I thought was a problem both for uh, rich children who need to understand better about the world beyond their bubble, and also for poor children who uh, do not see themselves represented in any book. And with the young uh, leaders, we were discussing what they would like to. See. I was asking them what type of books do you need, and they said we need books where the kids who come here feel represented and there are so few. So that I think was one of the main reasons why I wanted to write this book. Mm -hmm. And the other is, to, be, to tell you the truth, is that I really like writing stories. <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's fantastic, it's fun, I like it. And so it, it just, it was, you know, also pleasure for me. Okay. Uh, could you talk about how books like this and uh, storytelling helps young readers to understand the uh, impact of poverty? and also inequality like climate change and access to resources like food, shelter and education. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I'll relate this question to the one you asked before, which is how we go about translating some yeah. of the concept. So I think so I've been in this field for now 20 years and it's really what was needed 20 or well like 30 years really. And it's, you really need 30 years of work to have enough material to write good books for children. Yeah. Uh, it becomes, you know, I, uh, in some sense, I always wanted to write for children, but I was only ready to do it once I had enough things to say. Because uh, the way that I'm trying to turn this into uh, into something that people can relate to and be engaged with is by taking the you know, some of the most significant aspect of a problem and turning it into a, a story that happens and a character mm -hmm. and a person. And that is what, uh, why um, it becomes uh, relatable. So not giving a long lecture, but having the character move through a situation. Mm -hmm. And also from time to time, just you know, having fun, playing with their friend, arguing, doing something totally different that has nothing to do with the story. Mm -hmm. And that's how 
the topic, any topic, with that narrative strategy, I think I firmly believe, because children are so much open-minded than, so much more open-minded than adults, I firmly believe that you can talk about anything. And uh, climate change, for example, it's a big topic in the last five books. Um, uh, but gender issues, uh, discrimination against the poor, all of this can be treated in this, in this way. Uh, and how do you envision the role of community libraries and safeguarding and building access to these uh, stories and books? So, you know, I grew up going to library and uh, say, and my uh, uh, friend and illustrator also grew up going to library and those are really central as a point, as a place for books to be there, especially with this kind of open uh, shelf uh, strategy that you have here, but also as a place where people can share books and can discuss them. Yeah. And also as a place where parents might feel confident leaving their kids for a few hours. Um, so I think it can really be a, a central focus in a community to have a, to have a library. And I'm sure this is the role that this library plays here. Yeah. Uh, I read about your experiments with the uh, reading at your own level in Indian schools and uh, how it became a part of like uh, Ary Ariana's State Department uh, of Education effort. And uh, we have uh, something in common with your work because our library is uh, uh, designed to function as a lab so we can develop a module system for uh, free and community libraries and uh, advocate for free libraries policy. Uh, and uh, we like, and, and here like uh, the uh, free libraries policy, like we uh, build it like according to our learnings and we develop that policy over that. So uh, what is your impression on free libraries policy, that there should be a policy for free libraries in a country? Yeah, I think it's, it, it would be really a great thing. And uh, in fact, uh, when I received the Nobel Prize in 2019, uh, they asked me to give an object uh, for the museum yeah. that is related to my uh, research. And I, uh, I gave uh, four Pratam books uh, to, uh, to the museum to represent my research. Um, graduated books, level one, two, three, four, yeah. both to illustrate the fact that every child needs to read at their own level, but also to illustrate that there need to be books in, uh, in schools and there need to be uh, um, cheap but high quality books available uh, to all kids. And the library is the natural format for this to, to happen. So there should be a policy for free libraries. Uh, what research and documentation efforts uh, would you recommend for us as a free library um, activist for our library and work on the policy? Like, do you have any recommendations? Um, of books to read? Uh, like, uh, yeah, documents like uh, how should we go forward with this policy? And I, I know you haven't read the policy yet. Yeah, I have to read the policy yeah. to tell you where to that put will it be next. Great, like, to but yeah, exactly um, that, give it to anybody who passed by and solicit feedback and uh, find champions. Uh, in my own, own policy work, I have noticed that it's not enough to have a policy brief. You also really have to go and talk yeah. because uh, the, the policy brief is, is necessary, but it's not sufficient. Yeah. So once you have your policy brief, you have to kind of send your young people in the world, talk to people about it, talk to government officials, find champions inside, mm -hmm. and that's how it's going to happen. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you in our library. And uh, we are excited about the conversations and read allows we are going to have with our young uh, members. And uh, yeah, with this exciting and beautiful series. So thank you so much. Sure. I'm excited too, and it's really my honor to be here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have spoken about uh, poor economics and writings for children to build uh, communities, uh, libraries, uh, policy, and of course, climate injustice. Uh, our Rebuild to Read campaign is coming to an end and uh, we will invite you all to join us in effort to rebuild and uh, donate to our campaign. Thank you so much.